What is up, party people? Welcome back to the Drew Dillman YouTube channel. We're at Big Sugar Gravel down in Bentonville, Arkansas. It's the last stop for the Lifetime GP. I'm not in the GP. They screwed up on that one. But applications are due next week. And with that being said, I gotta have a good ride today. Like good enough to where they have to let me in in 2025. That was the goal last year. However, I found myself kissing the dirt about 10 miles in. I had me chasing all day. So things didn't quite go according to plan. One of the things that makes this race so gnarly is the amount of dirt that just gets kicked up. As soon as you hit the gravel, it's like this massive cloud of dust separates your eyes from the road and you can't sing a single thing. I mean, you could be smashing into a rock or falling into a black hole and you wouldn't know any difference because you literally can't see the road in front of you. And when the road is this gnarly, you've got two options. You can muscle up and make it to the front or you can pansy out and get dropped like I am right now. In both of those situations, you clear out the people in front of you so that you can actually see the road. So I am a little bit bummed to be gapped off the lead group, but I found myself in this good group of about 10 riders with a handful of lifetime GP athletes, including the man, the myth, the legend, Lachlan Morton. The gnar of this course means that there are a lot of flat tires. We got Adam Roberge, Canadian Natty Champ, Sean Finchamp, really strong rider. I mean, these guys are by far stronger than I am, and they're getting taken out of the race because of flat tires. Now, you'll notice that like my boy Chase Work right here, a lot of the pros are opting to go for mountain bike tires. In fact, we've talked extensively on our podcast, The Bonk Bros, about if you're looking for a new gravel bike and it can't clear 50 mil tires or bigger, don't buy it. Mountain bike tires are the new gravel tire. Now things get a little chaotic on this little sharp turn here. Ooh, there are guys off running up this thing. I had road cleats on, so I did not want to get off my bike and run up that section. So I did everything that I could uh, as far as bumping shoulders and taking the outside line to make sure I could ride that section. And I made it through clear and there is a group of about five of us that split off the front of that group and now we are moving forward and none of those guys that had to get off and run end up catching back up with us. Now, if you're a tire expert, you can tell by this shot that I did not run mountain bike tires. I'm running the Challenge Getaway XP45s. Now, the state carbon all road can fit mountain bike tires. That's right, folks. This bike right here, 
the state carbon all road fits mountain bike tires however i have never raced it with mountain bike tires so there was something that cautioned me to do that for the first time in a really big race like this had i spent more time on the mountain bike tires on dirt with my gravel bike i may have opted for some mountain bike tires so you can tell that these getaways gravel tires are limiting me on the downhills i have had to gap myself from this group because i'm taking it so much easier on the downhills i don't want to flat i don't want to slide out so i know these tires won't flat because i ran them the year before and they didn't flat but what i gain in flat protection i lose in traction At mile 37, we roll through aid one in Pineville. I grabbed this Musette filled up with flow formulas. I'll run through my nutrition plan. I started with two bottles of flow, each with 120 grams per bottle. I grabbed that Musette at mile 40 that had one bottle with 150 and another bottle with just water. Those were the mega bottles, one liter. I ended up losing the bottle of water, so I really only had the one bottle of Flow, drank all of it. I did carry an extra Flow gel flask that had 150 grams of carbs, but I did have a little less hydration because I lost that bottle, so I did grab a Coke at an aid and chugged it. Total carbs, 580. That's 116 per hour for about a five-hour race. You can pick up your Flow formulas with code RADDADDIZZLE for 15% off. We do end up catching that group, which was an hour and a half at 330 watts for the chase. That ends up being a 0.9 intensity factor for me. And what do you know, as soon as we catch the group, who's at the back? Matt Beers and Keegan Swinson, arguably the two strongest guys in this race. And they go from the back and they send a flyer. I could have rolled with them, but I don't. That would have been pretty awesome. I definitely would have made the highlight reel if I had done that. But I decided to conserve some energy. But I did make the highlight reel. Hey, there's your boy with the red bibs right there. That's right. All right, so here's what happened. On that road section, I tried to swap out a battery on my GoPro and must have hit my SD card because then my camera wasn't working again until the end of the race when I finally did push that SD card back in. So my boy Dylan Johnson hooked me up with some mid-race footage. What had happened was we got dropped as soon as we hit the gravel. Me, Dylan, a handful of other riders. The field that you saw in that highlight reel basically just got split apart with Keegan and all the really strong guys separating themselves from the kind of strong guys. And I find myself in this chase group with guys like Braden Lang, Russell Finsterwald, and eventually Pete Stetna's in this group, as you can see right here, because he suffered from a flat tire. Now he's on the front of this group drilling it. Dylan's on the front drilling it as well. Eventually we get to a climb and Pete Statna and Russell Finsterwald just leave us in their dust. And I'm left chasing with Braden Lane, Cody Cup, and a few other riders, Kyle Trudeau. And Dylan Johnson at that point gets dropped. Yeah, you heard that right. Dizzle dropped Dylan. So I'm rolling through the 73 mile aid here in that smaller group of maybe six of us. And after that, I did finally get my camera working in the last few miles of the race to see that group right here.
I went into Big Sugar with what I'm calling a super taper because for the two weeks leading up to this race, I didn't get in any rides over about three hours, which meant I wasn't that confident beyond about the three, three and a half hour mark. And you can see that in the power as I averaged 312 for the first three and a half hours and only 266 for the last hour and a half, which is about a 50 watt swing So with about five miles left, Braden Lang leans over to us and says, hey, I think I can see some guys up the road. And sure enough, on this last climb, we catch Sean Finchamp, Cameron Jones, and John Borselman, who had just been ahead of us for the last few miles of the race. And we catch them on this final climb about three miles from the finish. Now, I know that Kyle Trudeau and John Borselman are teammates, and so, now there's this team dynamic going into a big bunch sprint that could be anywhere from 18th place to 29th place because there's about 10 of us here sprinting for this finish. Now we're going up the final climb. Kyle Trudeau is trying to do somewhat of a lead out for John Borselman. He's on the front just keeping the pace high to prevent any attacks from happening. But that doesn't last too long and we end up sitting up and going pretty easy now we're all looking at each other Kyle Trudeau still on the front trying to make sure Borselman stand up there and then this guy right when we all think we're just gonna pedal easy all the way to the last turn this guy shows up to send a flyer good move on his part everybody's looking all it takes is a few seconds of us looking at each other and not reacting for that guy to get a massive gap. Now I'm sitting in seventh place in this group, not exactly where I wanna be. I'm stuck in seventh place through these final two turns. It is a pretty long sprint, so I'm feeling okay still. So I'm going full tilt at this point, everything I've got all the way to the line, it's narrow because they put the pros on the left side of the road. I've got decisions to make, left or right, I go, left here we go Ugh, good decision okay barely made it through there all right now the road is jammed i don't have anywhere where do i go left right right looks good left there's a lot of bodies i go right borselman comes over on me bumps my shoulder i say hey 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 there's the metal barrier can't go there now i gotta swing back onto borselman's left i still am able to come past Braden lang and borselman only beats me by half a bike so had he not closed the door on me, pretty sure I would have smoked him in that sprint. Right after we finish, Borselman makes his way over to me and says I should go protest because he knew I was gonna beat him and he closed the door on me and I said, hey man, I'm not gonna protest you, no big deal. But I just wanted to make sure y'all knew that he knew that I was gonna beat him. 